Hi everybody, it's Tom from FindTheBestCarPrice.com. Today we're going to take a look at this 2022 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. This model has the SCA Black Widow package. We're going to show you exactly what that is. So for a Jeep that costs $73,809, is it a Jeep that is worth the price? Well, let's take a look at exactly what you get here. And obviously, being a Jeep, it's going to be very functional, very capable off-road, and highly modifiable. Is that actually a word, modifiable? Well, you can modify it, that's for sure. Maybe that sounds a little bit better. But let's take a look at some of the add-ons that you get for what seems to be somewhat of a high sticker price. So you're going to have these two red tow hooks here on the front. You can see the winch is there, everything you need to operate that winch will be included with this model. And then obviously a little bit of a change on the tires there. Those are 37 inch tires wrapped around the 20 inch wheels. This model also has a three inch suspension lift. This is part of that SCA Black Widow package. The Black Widow logo here, obviously the red surround. That red does make a big difference, especially on this black exterior paint. Then you'll have the side steps here with the Black Widow logo right here within. And like I said, you have two tow hooks on the front. You're also going to find a third tow hook here on the rear, a singular tow hook. And good news, anytime you have oversized tires like this, it's always good to know that the vehicle comes with a full size spare. And when it comes to the interior, you're going to find the Black Widow custom gauges which will be found right here, obviously, on the dashboard. Also, the black leather interior and the Black Widow logo stitched into the headrests. Now, one thing I would like to see different, tell me what you think about it, should that Black Widow be stitched into the headrests in the rear seats as well? And something else that is here, it's going to be somewhat hard to show in this daylight, but there is also LED red interior lighting, so that's good. You're going to find some gloss black here on the dashboard, obviously the handle that you can grab. Everything else here is basically going to be the same that you would find with any Jeep, including what is under the hood. There are multiple engine options available. In this case, it's not going to be the hybrid powertrain. Let's take a look at exactly what it is. Under the hood here is going to be the 3.6 liter V6. It puts out 285 horsepower and the torque numbers come in at 260 pounds feet mated to an eight speed automatic transmission. I don't have to say most likely that this is obviously a four wheel drive vehicle and this power plant is mated to an eight speed automatic transmission. What about MPGs? Well, believe it or not, those don't actually change with the larger tire size. So that's obviously a plus 18 miles per gallon city, 23 on the highway, a combined total of 20. And according to Jeep, for every 100 miles you drive, you should use five gallons of gas. Okay, let's talk about towing and cargo capacity. Towing numbers come in at 3,500 pounds. And depending on how the rear area is set up, the towing numbers range between 27.7, or if you maximize cargo space by lowering these rear seats, I put one side down, that will maximize cargo capacity to 67.4 cubic feet. And multiple options available for the top, including a soft top. This model has the hard top, speakers built in right here, so everything stays in place when you take the top off, so you don't lose the ability to listen to those tunes. And then you have the air conditioning vents right here on the rear of the console, controls for the power rear windows. You have your connectivity, not only with USB ports, but with a power outlet right there. The household style power outlet really gives a lot of functionality to the Jeep. And then obviously, again, an advantage to taking the doors off is that you still have your cup holders right here. You don't lose those, at least the rear seat passengers don't. And a quick look at the remote. As you can see, everything you would expect to see there and something a lot of you like to see there, you've got remote start. And the button right here, what is that? Well, that's for the key. In case the battery dies, you can still get into the vehicle. That key gives you a few different options, obviously, but you do have a push button start. So that key is not required to start the vehicle. A quick look at what the instrument cluster looks like. The Saharo logo right there. 
You've got the steering wheel mounted controls, voice commands, all the good stuff you would expect to see here. There is your cruise control and a very easy to use. For those of you who are still not driving vehicles that have touch screens like this and all the technology that we have in these modern day vehicles, this is a very simple system to use. So don't be afraid of it. You'll be able to learn how to use it with absolutely no problem. And while you have the capabilities to control the air conditioning system here in the screen, that doesn't mean that's the only place like it is in some vehicles, not very many, but a few. You also have kind of an old school experience here with that as far as buttons and knobs go. And obviously gonna have the knobs here for the radio, for volume, for tuning, and more connectivity, more controls for controlling the power windows. You've got a 12 volt power outlet right there. And then we'll show the other connectivity options right here. And then, well, I probably don't need to say too much about what you have here as far as the control for four wheel high, four wheel low. There's your shifter right there for those who are not fans of push button shifters. Well, I don't know that we're gonna see that in a Jeep, at least not any time soon. And the lid for the console here, you've got a couple of different options here. You've got this little tray right here if you want to use that, or let me close that. And you can also reveal the deeper section right here, a little bit more space, and as you can see, a little bit more connectivity. Okay, let's get out for a quick test drive here in the Jeep. If you're looking for the Jeep that will get up and run the fastest, well, you might want to consider the hybrid powertrain because it makes 385 horsepower and it will get up and run. Once you're up and running and you drop the hammer on it, uh, it's kind of surprising. But even at that, 280 horsepower is still not that bad. It's so funny to see some of the comments that people leave on some of these videos such as my own and talk about how 285 horsepower is just not enough. Well, it depends on your situation, but it is something to research if you haven't done so. There was a time many years ago when vehicles were making a lot less than 285 horsepower and people were surviving. So if that's a concern, well, not a big deal. And just driving around, what little driving I've done in this particular Jeep, I've noticed that it has absolutely no problem whatsoever getting down the road, getting up to speed, doing what I need to do. Although, it would be nice to get my hands on a 392 and see exactly what that would do, but just cruising down the road here, I'm not pushing the pedal all that hard. I'm still having absolutely no trouble getting up to the speed limit and getting down the road. This Jeep has plenty of horsepower, and even with the added gear as far as what you have with those taller tires and other factors that can go into that, it's still not a problem. So. What is my ultimate verdict on this Jeep? Well, if you're looking something that starts out with a lot of great customization and already has a very sharp look to it, well, I would say that this is definitely a great choice. And here's the good ex experience right here of seeing about getting down the road. I am having no trouble at all. If you're concerned about the horsepower number, and I can already hear people talking about that down in the comments section, I had absolutely no trouble right there getting up to the speed limit. In fact, getting up above the speed limit. This Jeep gets down the road just fine, but obviously the power and the torque are really going to come in handy out on the trail. If you go up into the mountains to have some fun there, any off-roading excursion that you may choose to take, well, obviously this Jeep can handle it with absolutely no problem. To learn more about the model in today's video, visit the link in the description for a detailed comparison between trims and pricing for the vehicle we featured or any vehicle you may be interested in. These pages feature information such as our recommended trim level based on price, value, and features. Thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. We look forward to seeing you next time.